Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. I'm Muhammad Fahmi and today we'll be discussing the microbiology of skin and deep wounds as well as abscesses. This lecture will cover the various stages of wound contamination, colonization and infection along with the microorganisms involved in each stage. Microbes and chronic wounds. Let's begin by understanding the relationship between microbes and chronic wounds. All chronic wounds are contaminated with bacteria. Wound healing occurs in the presence of bacteria. Interestingly, certain bacteria appear to aid wound healing. It's crucial to note that it's not merely the presence of organisms, but their interaction with the patient that determines their influence on wound healing. Definitions Wound contamination refers to the presence of non-replicating organisms in the wound. Key point to remember, all chronic wounds are contaminated. Contaminants come from indigenous microflora and or the environment. Most contaminating organisms are not able to multiply in a wound. For example, most organisms found in soil would not grow in wound. Wound colonization. Wound colonization is defined as the presence of replicating microorganisms adherence to the wound in the absence of injury to the host. Important aspects include, it's very common, most organisms are normal skin flora such as Staphylococcus epidermidis, other coagulase negative Staphylococcus, Corynebacterium species, Brevibacterium species, Proprionibacterium acnes and Pterosporum species. Wound infections occurs when there are replicating microorganisms within a wound that cause host injury. The primary pathogens of concerns are Staphylococcus aureus, Beta hemolytic streptococcus, which are Streptococcus pyogenes and Streptococcus agelacte. E. coli, Proteus, Klebsiella, Anaerobes, Pseudomonas, Acinotobacter, Stenotropomonas or Xenthromonas. Microbiology of wounds. The microbial flora in wounds changes over time. Let's examine the different stages. In the early acute wound, normal skin flora predominate. Staphylococcus aureus and beta hemolytic streptococcus soon follow. Note that group B streptococcus and Staphylococcus aureus are common in diabetic foot ulcers. After four weeks, as the, as the wound persists, facultative anaerobic gram-negative rods colonize the wound. Most common are Proteus, E. coli, and Klebsiella. As the wounds deteriorate, and affects deeper structures, anaerobes become more common. Infections are often polymicrobial, four to five organisms. Long-term chronic wounds. In long-standing chronic wounds, often contain more anaerobes than anaerobes. Than aerobes. Aerobic gram-negative roads infect wounds laid in the course of chronic wounds degeneration usually acquired from exogenous sources, for example, bath and food water. Examples of organism, Pseudomonas, Acinetobacter, and Stenotrophomonas or Xenthomonas. Pseudomonas and similar organisms. These organisms are not very invasive unless the patient is highly compromised. For example, Eczema gangrenosum in neutropenic patients are associated with marked wound deterioration due to endotoxin, enzymes, and exotoxins. Deep and complex wounds. In deep and complex wounds, can infect underlying muscles and bone causing osteomyelitis, infection in bone and uh, muscles. 
organisms associated with osteomyelitis include coliforms, anaerobes, and staph aureus. Enterococcus and candida. These organisms are often isolated from wounds. Treatment is only indicated if no other pathogens are present. Organisms are present in high concentration. From colonization to infection. The progression from colonization to infection depends on several factors. For example, infection. This equation takes into account the number of organisms, the virulence factors they produce, the resistance of the host to infection. Dose of bacteria. The bacteria dose required for infection differs depending on the organisms involved. Some organisms need high concentration, for example, Candida enterococcus species. Various combinations of bacterial species can result in, most, in more host damage because they have synergistic effect. For example, Group B Streptococcus or Streptococcus agilacti and Staph aureus. Organisms to treat regardless of numbers. Some organisms should be treated regardless of their numbers in a wound. They are beta hemolytic streptococci, mycobacteria species, Bacillus anthracis, Yersinia pestis, Coronabacterium diphtheriae, Erysipelotrix reusipotae, Leptospira, Triponema species, Brucella species, Clostridium species, in viruses, Varicella zoster virus, Herpes simplex virus, Dimorphic fungi, and Leishmania, Leishmaniasis. <coughs> Virulence. Virulence refers to factors an organism produces that can result in host damage. Examples include Hyaluronidase, produced by Streptococcus pyogenes, Proteases, produced by Staphylococcus aureus and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Toxins, produces, produced by Streptococcus pyogenes and Staphylococcus aureus, and endotox, Endotoxin, gram-negative organism. Some organisms produce few virulent factors, while synergy between different bacterial factors can cause significant host damage. Host resistant. Host resistant is the single most important determinant in wound infection. Both local and systemic factors play a role. Local factors, factors that increase the chances of wound infection include large wound area, increased wound depth, degree of chronicity, anatomic location, presence of foreign body, necrotic tissue, and mechanisms of injury, for example, bites or perforated viscous. Systemic factors that increase the chances of wound infection include vascular disease, edema, malnutrition, diabetes, alcoholism, prior surgery or radiation, corticosteroid use, and inherited neutrophil defects. Identifying and infected wounds. Identifying and infected wounds can be challenging. There's a continuum between pathogen colonization and damage. No absolutely foolproof laboratory test aids in this diagnosis. A common feature in this failure of the wound to heal and progressive deterioration. Signs of wound infection. The typical features of an infected wound include increased exudate, increased swelling, increased erythema, increased pain, increased local temperature, peri wound cellulitis, ascending infection, and change in appearance of granulation tissue. For example, discoloration, prone to bleed, or highly friable. Diagnosis Specimen collection and culture te techniques Proper specimen collection is crucial for accurate diagnosis. The gold standard is tissue biopsies or needle aspirate from the leading edge of the wound after debridement. 
10 to the power of 5 CFU per gram of tissue indicates a greater likelihood of sepsis developing. Specimen collection guidelines. When collecting specimens, indicate the specific anatomic site of biopsy. Specify if it is, uh, if it is a surface of or deep wound. Ask for smear and gram stain of tissue. Surface wounds should not be cultured for anaerobes. Deep wounds should be cultured for anaerobes. If tissue biopsies is not possible, an alternative method is cleanse the wound, cleanse the wound with sterile saline, vigorously swab the base of the lesion. For the surface wounds, place swab in a sterile container for transport. For deep wounds, place swab in a sterile anaerobic container for transport. Conclusion Understanding the microbiology of skin and deep wounds as well as abscesses is crucial for effective treatment. By recognizing the stages of wound contamination, colonization, and infection, and understanding the roles of various microorganisms, we can better manage these conditions and promote healing. Thank you for your attention.